Hi everybody, I'm Zach Collins with Scorpion Racing Products and today I want to take a few minutes to review the installation procedure for our shaft mount rocker systems. To begin the installation, you'll need to gather the tools required to complete the installation procedure. Um, the first thing you'll need is a torque wrench, T50 and a T45 torque socket. You'll also need a standard ratchet, normally 3 8 drive, as well as an extension because it helps you reach the shaft bolt holes. And you'll also need a black Sharpie, a 7 seconds Allen wrench, a feeler gauge to check your valve lash, and you'll also need a box end 7 16 12 point wrench, as well as the extreme pressure lube that's included with the shaft mount rocker kit. You can use some of our cam and lifter installation lubricant if you want to lubricate the valve tip and the roller when you install it. To begin the installation procedure, you want to make sure that the cylinder head is clean, free of any debris, and that all other components are removed. Now to start, the first thing we're going to verify is the correct stand height. The stand height determines the geometry of the overall system. So if the stand height's incorrect, your pattern on your valve tip is either going to be off center or too wide. So the first thing you want to do is take your black Sharpie and color both of the valve tips until they're completely black and allow them to dry for a few seconds. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the stand. So I'll go ahead and grab my stand. We've already set this cylinder head up, so I know it's going to take a 25 thousand shim. I'm going to go ahead and install it with the shims initially just to show you the entire procedure. So we'll go ahead and place our shims on the cylinder head at each cylinder and just drop them in place and roughly align them with the bolt holes by hand. If you have the engine at an angle, you can put a dab of assembly lubricant on the bottom of the shim and that'll hold it in place and keep it from moving so it's easier to align once you go to install the stand. Now that I have my shims in place, I'm going to go ahead and grab a few bolts in my stand. Normally start with the two end holes, that way it aligns the entire stand. And you're just simply going to place it on top of the cylinder head. Try to align the bolt holes, make sure all your push rods are out of the way. Align your shim and then drop your stand in place. Once your stand's in place, go ahead and try to finger tighten and start the bolts at both ends. And once you've started the bolts at both ends, you can go ahead and drop in your other bolts. And you can do that while using your torque socket if it's easier rather than using your fingers. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the rest of the bolts in. And you just want to hand tighten both ends first to make sure the entire stand's in place. And you're only hand tightening them loosely so the stand will still have some lateral movement. You want to get it roughly centered and then you want to go ahead and start from the center out and get all of the rest of the bolts snugged up. And now while we're here, we'll go ahead and torque these bolts so that way the stand's in place as where it will be when the engine's fully assembled. You go ahead and put your torque socket on the end of your torque wrench. These 7 16 14 stand bolts need to be torqued to between 60 and 65 foot-pounds. So I'm gonna set my torque wrench to 60 foot-pounds and on my torque pattern, I'm gonna start from the inside and work my way out, alternating from side to side. So I simply just put the torque socket in and you wanna do a nice, gentle, even pull. It may take you a couple rotations until you actually get the bolt tight enough to pull the full torque. And then you're gonna repeat that procedure for the entire remainder of the bolts. Once everything is fully torqued, you're gonna go ahead and move to the next step and we're gonna go ahead and rotate the engine in the normal direction of rotation. So we're gonna go ahead and roll the engine over until we get to top dead center on the cylinder we're working on, which in this case is number one. So top dead center, 
is when both the intake and exhaust are on the base circle for the most part. So you'll watch both push rod tips, keeping pressure with your fingers and downward so that way they stay engaged with the lifters. And you'll see that push rod just opened. Now it should come back down. And now I'm waiting on the opposite side. And there that push rod just opened. So as soon as it comes back down, they should both be roughly almost 100% on the base circle. Okay, now that the stand is fully torqued in place, we're gonna go ahead and grab our pair of rockers, which come pre-assembled on the shaft. And we're gonna grab our three shaft bolts. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna slide the shaft bolts into the shaft holes. And then once we have all three bolts on, we're gonna go ahead and slide this in place and just make sure that the push rods fall into the push rod seats and the shaft fully sits in the saddle on the stand. Once it's seated, we're gonna go ahead and just hand tighten these bolts until they're snugged up. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our torque wrench with a T45 Torx bit. And we're gonna go ahead and torque these to about 25 foot pounds, no more than 26. Uh, once we have those in place, we'll go ahead and run them down. Grab our torque wrench. And we're gonna set our torque to 25 in this case. Any, anything between 24 and 26 is acceptable, but definitely no more than 26. So I have my torque wrench set at 25 foot pounds. I'm gonna start with the center bolt and I'm gonna pull until I come to full torque. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep going, starting with either side. Doesn't matter the, the pattern at this point as long as you get the middle first. And then you're gonna go ahead and get all three snugged up, torqued. And now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and verify that our adjuster nuts are loose and we do have some play here. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and snug these up to roughly zero lash, just until we have no free movement here. So what we need to do is put our box end wrench on the adjuster nut, put our Allen wrench in the adjustable seat, and we're gonna go ahead and turn the seat down until we take away all that play, which is right there. And then what we do is we use the wrench to snug up the nut while we hold the Allen wrench in place so the seat doesn't rotate any further. We're gonna do that on both rocker arms. And once we have both rocker arms adjusted, we're gonna go ahead and rotate the engine over a few times by hand. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull the rockers off and look at what pattern it leaves on the valve tip to determine whether or not we have the correct stand height. So we'll just roll the engine over a few times, let it go through a few cycles. Normally about five to 10 cycles is adequate to leave a mark on the valve tip. And then once we're done rotating the engine by hand, we want to bring it back to top dead center where both valves are closed so we can go ahead and loosen the adjusters and then pull the rocker pair off to get the look at the valve tip we need. So right here, I'm at top dead center, both valves are closed. And now I can go ahead and get my 7 16 box end wrench and my Allen wrench again. And I'm just gonna put the box end wrench on. I'm gonna crack the nut loose. And then I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the seat up by bringing it back up. Once I have that done, I'm gonna repeat it for the second rocker. Crack the nut loose, back the adjuster off. And now that we have that done, we can go ahead and take our torque socket, T45, and we can remove those bolts. Once we remove the shaft bolts, we'll be able to see exactly what pattern we left. Now we can pull the rocker pair off and we can look at our pattern on our valve tips. What I see here is a pattern that's centered and you want the pattern to be as close to center as possible. If your pattern is inboard 
toward the intake manifold side, that means you're gonna need to shim your stand. Your stand's too short. If the pattern is out toward the exhaust side of the cylinder head, you're either gonna need to machine the head or the stand down to bring it back in. We make sure our stands are built as short as possible, so that way it minimizes the amount of applications that require machining to the cylinder head. So most of the time, you're gonna to have to add shim underneath the stand to get the geometry correct. Unless it's a stock style head, then it should be pretty close right out of the box with no shimming required. So like I said, we already had 50,000 shims underneath this stand. So that's how we already knew it was gonna be optimized. And we want these patterns to also be less than 80 thousandths of an inch wide. So you can take a caliper and measure those um, now that these are centered, we know they're good and they're definitely narrow enough. We're going to go ahead and actually install the rocker pair, torque them and actually lube everything. And this will be the final installation of the rocker pair. Now that we know everything's verified for correct geometry. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your rocker pair. You want to go ahead and turn it over and inside each one of the adjuster seats, you want to go ahead and put a dab of our extreme pressure lube right into the push rod seat where the push rod mates with the rocker arm. Once you have your lube on there, you're gonna go ahead and put the rockers right back in place with the engine still at top dead center where you took them off at. And you're gonna go ahead and make sure the push rods fall back into the push rod seats. And then you're gonna hand tighten the bolts again and go through the same procedure with running them down and then torque them to 25 foot pounds from the inside out. So we'll grab our torque wrench, verify that our torque's still set to 25 foot-pounds, which it is, and then we'll go ahead and with a nice even pull, we'll torque them to 25 foot-pounds. Middle first, and then your outers. Once we have the full torque set, we can go ahead and set our rough valve lash. When you set your valve lash, you're going to need your feeler gauge and you're also going to need your box end 7 16 wrench and your Allen wrench. What you're going to do is you're going to insert the feeler gauge in between the valve tip and the roller of the rocker. Now what this does is based on your camshaft profile, allows lash in the system so that at high RPM you don't get into binding issues, valve float, valve to piston interference, and bad harmonics. So what you're going to do is put your box end wrench over top of the adjuster nut, insert your Allen into the hex in the adjustable seat, and then you're gonna to wanna to look at your manufacturer's cam card that the cam came with, and you're gonna look at the spec for what they have for valve lash. It's probably spec'd as hot lash, so if you're setting your lash cold, as we are here, the engine's not to temperature, you're definitely gonna to wanna to adjust that by about four to six thousandths, so that way you can compensate for the difference in temperature. So let's say if your cam card says 20 thousandths hot, when you're setting it cold, you're gonna to wanna to set it to 24 to 26 thousandths. So I'm just gonna insert my feeler gauge right underneath the roller. I'm gonna turn my seat down until I feel a lot of resistance and I can still get the feeler gauge in. I wanna be sure that the feeler gauge still goes in, but I also wanna be sure that it's not too loose. You should feel a good bit of resistance and when you put the feeler gauge in, it should be tight enough against the feeler gauge that the roller actually rolls as you move the feeler gauge in and out. You can leave the feeler gauge in if you prefer, or you can just set it. I prefer to leave the feeler gauge in just to verify. And then you're gonna go ahead and tighten the adjuster nut with the 7 16th box end, just by hand, not very tight. And you're gonna make sure you don't move your Allen wrench because that'll adjust your lash. Go ahead and pull the tools off. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a 7 16th 12 point socket that fits right on the adjuster nut, and you're gonna to torque it to between 18 and 20 foot-pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine right in the middle of the 19 foot-pounds. Go ahead and put it right on the back of the adjuster, and then do a nice gentle pull until we reach full torque. And we're there. And we're gonna repeat that procedure for the second rocker arm. Nice gentle pull until we reach full torque. Now we just installed the rockers at top dead center. We're gonna to wanna to verify correct valve lash 
at two different places. On the intake side, we want to verify it when the exhaust is open, which means the intake is definitely on the base circle, so the valve is fully closed. On the exhaust side, we want to verify valve lash when the intake has come fully open and about halfway closed. That's when the exhaust is on the base circle of the cam lobe and the valve is fully closed. So I'm going to go ahead, rotate the engine over by hand, normal direction of rotation, until I start to see the exhaust valve open. So now that we've set our lash and torqued our adjusters, we're going to go ahead and rotate the engine over by hand, and we want to verify valve lash. So we're going to do that by rotating the engine over until we get the exhaust valve just starting to open. Once the exhaust valve just starts to open, the intake rocker is on its base circle. So what we're going to do is grab our feeler gauge. We're going to put the same feeler gauge that we used to set the lash in, and we're going to verify that that feeler gauge still fits, which means our lash is intact. So our feeler gauge goes in. Now what we want to do is we want to take the next size up, either one or two thousandths larger, and we want to verify that that size will not go in. As you can see here, I'm not getting that to go in, so that means our lash is correct. Now we'll rotate the engine over until the exhaust comes all the way open and closes all the way. And now we're going to watch the intake rocker arm. And the intake rocker arm is going to open. And then when the intake is about a quarter to a half of the way closed, we're going to stop. And now our exhaust rocker is on the base circle. So now we're going to repeat the procedure with the exhaust rocker, take our feeler gauge back out, grab the same one we used to set lash at top dead center, and verify that it goes in. Now we're going to take one size larger, whether it be a thousandth or two, and we're going to make sure that that does not go in. And I can't get that to go in, so our lash is properly set. So now what we'll go ahead and do is roll the engine over and leave it at top dead center. We're ready to move to the next cylinder. Now the rockers are completely installed and you're ready to run your engine. All of our rocker arms are available at performance retailers and distributors nationwide. And you can find more information on our shaft rockers at www.scorpionracingproducts.com.